What's up YouTube, this is Hill Phantom. I'm super excited because today we make space history. If you're not familiar, at 8.30 p.m., give or take, weather windows, we're going to see the launch of Inspiration4. Now, Inspiration4 is gonna make history for a couple of reasons, but most notably, because it's going to carry four citizens into space. Let's go. Now, as much as I like to bash the billionaire boy space club, Isaacman seems like the real deal. He worked really hard when he was younger and established a company called Shift4. Shift4 went public, he made a billion dollars, and from there he's been giving to charity and the best I can tell, living a really cool rock star life. He's focused a lot on becoming a pilot, so much so that he became an actual jet pilot and has a bunch of fighter jets that he flies. He's also a member of the Blue Diamond Jet Team that does expedition flights across the entire country. Think of like the Blue Angels, but not as extreme, but still pretty, pretty cool. We know that these billionaires have all kinds of toys, but this guy, he's, he's willing to take risks. And for that, I got a lot of respect for him. And one of the main reasons I have respect for him is because he said he didn't want to be just another billionaire in space. He actually wanted to do something with it. So he made it into a charity mission for St. Jude's Hospital. Now above and beyond just this, he donated $100 million of his own money directly to St. Jude's. But he didn't stop there. Of the three other seats that he had available on the spaceship, he gave two to St. Jude's to do as they wish with. And the other one he used as a contest to promote a shift for company. So where did those seats go? Well, let's meet the crew. The first seat goes to Haley Arkinu and represents Hope. Now she was a former patient at St. Jude's and she survived cancer. She went on to study and became a physician assistant, and she now works at St. Jude's. She will represent Hope on the space shuttle, and she was given that by the hospital and Isaacman. The second seat was given to Chris Simbrowski. He represented generosity. The second seat was actually used as a sweepstakes. So if you donated to St. Jude's, your name would go into an entry to garnish a seat on the spacecraft. Now, Chris is an engineer with an aeroscience engineering background, which is really cool and really neat. Plays a ukulele and is a really cool father. The third and final seat representing prosperity was used by Isaac Min's team himself to promote Shift 4. They put together a contest to see who could build the best online store for getting donations for St. Jude's. Now, the one who won, Cyan Proctor, is a geoscience professor and an analog astronaut. She applied to be a real astronaut, got turned down, and she didn't think she'd make it to space. Well, here we are. At 8.03 Eastern, we're going to see the launch of the Inspiration4 rocket from Cape Canaveral, weather permitting. Now the Inspiration4 will be a Falcon 9 rocket with a modified Crew Dragon on top of it. Now this was modified because of a change in plans. Initially, they were going to fly and dock to the ISS where the civilian astronauts would spend three days. Once that was scrapped, Isaacman took the opportunity to push for a higher orbit. That higher orbit is 575 kilometers. To give you reference, the ISS of 450 kilometers above the Earth. So, no longer needing the docking equipment, they replaced that with a huge glass dome where these civilians can gaze upon the stars. But why does this make history? This makes history because they will only be the second crew to orbit so high. The first, being those who landed on the moon. Now, once they're in space, what would they be doing? Well, other than just hanging out and enjoying the ride, they do have some small experiments they'll be doing, as well as monitoring their body just to contribute to the wealth of knowledge of what happens to a human in space. Again, as I noted earlier, it also marked the first time someone with a prosthetic will be in space. Haley has a metal rod in her leg, so we'll get data as to how that responds to being in space. Does it hurt? Is there any issues? Just another thing to add to the data set. They will also be auctioning off a couple different items, a couple special cool flight jackets, and Chris will auction off his ukulele that he will play in space. They're also flying with a couple NFTs. The first is a never before heard track from Kings of Leon, and it will be an NFT in space. And as far as I know, the first NFT in space. They'll also include a couple different artwork NFTs. One of those NFTs went to the Santa Ana Trench. Now it's going to space, kind of cool. So above and beyond how freaking cool this is that regular people are going to space for the very first time and SpaceX is doing it, 
is the fact that we have a couple other historic events. One is the height of the orbit. The second is that Haley has a prosthetic. And the third is NFTs in space. Four different things that are creating history and I'm so glad to be alive to see it. Now down below is SpaceX link to the live feed and I encourage you to watch it. I will report back once we hear more and I look forward to tracking this because it's such an exciting time. Well, that's it for me. I'm Hill Phantom reminding you always send it.